Hey, it's Matt. I'm back with another watercolor. This one's uh, a bit different than many of the other ones I've been working on. This is an 18 by 24 inch transparent watercolor. It is full of detail. I've done a couple of paintings like this that had a lot of different animals in it and it was, they were really more about patterns and colors and uh, emotion uh, within the painting rather than just being about the, the animals like a typical wildlife painting. So these are interesting to do, but they take an incredible amount of time. And the reason they take so long is, well, you've got to have all the photo reference taken for them. You've got to have all these sketches made, and then you've got to figure out how to compose it on the page. And what on earth are you going to actually show that would be um, interesting or different with the, kind of this uh, collection of different animals? So. They, the amount of time that goes into them makes them difficult to justify at times. Um, but uh, this one was kind of nagging at me and I wanted to uh, investigate this. And after a lot of different sketches, it literally was a couple of days doing different uh, doodles and sketches and uh, messing around in Photoshop with ideas, I came up with an idea of doing kind of the spectrum of birds and uh, then having these egrets with white breaking up the typical spectrum that you might see. Um, and one of the difficulties with a painting like this is that every last square inch is detailed. There's no real relief from it um, like you might have in a typical painting. You might have a, you know, a sky background or some blurry green things. And these, everything is kind of just exhaustive, um, you know, highly rendered detail and that, that just takes an extraordinary amount of time but that's kind of what makes it interesting is that it, it has uh, you, you can kind of stop seeing the detail and you start seeing these patterns of color and feather patterns and you're, you're kind of looking at it a little bit differently so once I spent a couple of days sketching and working in Photoshop, I came up with a design that I liked. I started to transfer that to the watercolor paper and then started just filling in uh, you know, the lightest local colors of everything. This one is going to be super fast as far as the, the painting because it was, I think in the end it was close to between 70 and 80 hours just of putting paint down. Um, so it's going to move by pretty quickly. The first task in, in many of these is, is cover the paper. One of the difficulties with this is that it, with watercolor, typically you want to work light to dark. And you've got these light birds, the, the egrets, in the middle of the these very saturated colors. So the order you might want to paint these in is going to be kind of compromised. So you have to put in a, some of the, at least establish the, the main white tones early and then start bringing in the other, more saturated colors. Predominantly this painting, the initial washes were done with, I think a four, maybe a couple of places I used a number six round brush, and then the rest of the painting was almost exclusively done with a really sharp number two round brush, and just a bazillion layers. I find that if it, it was uh, good to move around the page rather, you know, I'll, I'll see sometimes people paint one bird and then move on to the next one or one, one section of it. Uh, personally, I'll find that it, you kind of want to bring everything to a certain level of completion and then come back and uh, work on everything again in a different pattern. And that keeps things developed at a consistent level. Um, Otherwise, I think there's a temptation at times to have, you know, a really detailed foreground object and then everything else is kind of just, you're bored with it, so you, you kind of move on to, uh, you finish the painting, and some areas are more finished than others. With these, you know, I kind of moved across the page, did a little here, a little there. I wasn't worried about small details like eyeballs at first. I was worried about the big picture and overall tones of color.
the blues on this one were really uh, they were fun. Parts of them were difficult because the blues started moving into these purples, and then I also wanted to have some dark colors that would kind of contrast with the whites of the egrets too. So, you know, the indigo buntings and the grackles on the far end that I'm working on now uh, had some some fun uh, challenges to render in watercolor. In the end, there were 55 birds on this thing, so there were a lot of, at least there were some partial birds too, I don't really count those, uh, but if it had an eye or a beak, then it was a bird. I wanted to have a spectrum of colors kind of moving across the page, and some of them were easy to pick, and then others were kind of harder. There, I didn't have a lot of great green bird references. Um, I did have these turicos from the zoo and a, a female crested wood partridge that were kind of just, just the right greens for what I wanted. And uh, you can see some of the photo references that I had. And in those cases, you know, th some of these were taken in zoos, some were taken in the wild, and then uh, the lighting is different on different days. Sometimes the lighting was overcast, and sometimes you're using a flash. And So one of the challenges in the painting was trying to keep uh, a consistent lighting in the actual you know, rendering of the birds, so when they were all on the one page, they kind of looked like they existed in the same space. And that was, that was one thing that, uh, kind of bringing it beyond the photo reference that was, was kind of, uh, difficult in the challenge. Um, the other thing that was interesting was trying to pull, like in this case, you'll see the yellow birds. Well, I tried to have some of the yellow birds that, you know, the Wilson's warblers on the bottom had some of these greens that then carried your eye into the green section of the painting. And then the Orioles, you have kind of the more yellow sections of the bird as opposed to the more reddish orange sections, which would then kind of transition your eye from one thing to the next. Um, and at one point I thought about just having this kind of spectrum of birds moving across the page and Partway through, I thought it would be dull, and I ended up kind of putting these egrets in the in the pattern because I thought these stripes of white would be a way to break up the rainbow into, uh, you know, in this case, kind of five different sections of painting. And in the end, I was happy I did it because I thought the whites actually made the the colors more appear more saturated. Um, there's kind of a relief from the spectrum and it broke up some of the predictability of it in, in what I thought was a pleasant way. And the other challenge that came into that was when I rendered the whites, I was bringing in, in some cases, some of these reflected greens that, you know, they weren't in the photo reference, but to have it exist on the page kind of somewhat convincingly, you're using some reflected greens or blues or purples or reds, depending on what birds the egret was sitting next to. And then, then I was really happy with in the end that, that it was, uh, it made for an interesting painting of whites. So the whites even have a lot of color on them. Here you can see the, uh, the grackles coming in, and you know, it's the uh, some of my photo reference for the grackles were female birds, and I had to change them to males. And there are others where it was just not quite right. So there were some liberties taken a little bit with the uh, I kind of oversaturated some of the grackles for the sake of the painting. And most of the birds, and when I was doing this, I wanted to have kind of repeating patterns. So, you know, I have the, the black of the birds' faces with the cardinals and the orioles and the, the uh, uh, magnolia warblers. And then there's a little bit of uh, black on the turicos. And so there's kind of this, these patterns that went across the page and up and down as well that, that I thought would be interesting for your eye to investigate. 
you looked at the painting that it wouldn't get boring, that it was just the same Oriole 12 times, but kind of have a changing pattern of the bird moving as it kind of works up the page, and then you've got the changing patterns of the birds, you know, right to left as well. Um, it was the, an interesting thing to, to design on the page. Here it's getting pretty close. Um, in the end, you find yourself just fiddling with a lot of little details, and I had most of the uh, saturated, you know, spectrum colors done, and, and then in the end, I had a lot of little fiddling around to do with, you know, correcting little things on the whites of the egrets, and uh, you know, sharpening up tiny little details, and adding a feather here and a feather there, and. The last passes take the longest time because you just keep finding little itty bitty things that need corrections. But it was a fun painting to work on. I did find myself really looking forward to come down and, and see how much I could get done in a given day. and. I knew that in the end I'd have a painting that was truly different um, than many things and uh, that was rewarding to do something that uh, was so unusual. That's it. At the end, it was a lot of tiny little details that needed to be put in, but uh, and there was it was it was uh, a, a definite challenge to work on this one. It had uh, had a lot of uh, difficult things to work through, and a lot of square inches of just you know fantastic detail to try to to try to cover. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you liked it, and if you have a chance, have a peek at the blog and the website, and leave a comment if you'd like.